This conference will now be recorded. Всех приветствую в Центре компьютерного обучения «Специалист» на очередном семинаре, который посвящен курсам от Совета по электронной коммерции и секансе. Меня зовут Сергей Клевогин, я инструктор по этичному хакингу, по информационной безопасности, и со многими участниками семинара мы встречаемся не в первый раз. Мы время от времени проводим в учебном центре специалист такие семинары, и я что-то покажу, расскажу, и это может относиться или к какой-то теме, которая нам пригодится на курсе, или что-то, что курс дополняет, или что-то о самом курсе расскажу. И не в первый раз так встречаемся. Можете на YouTube написать «Специалист ТВ», найти записи предыдущих семинаров, например, семинары по практическим приемам этичного хакинга, семинары по каким-то инструментам или семинар по изменениям в курсе Certified Ethical Hacker. Но в этот раз наш семинар посвящен курсу Certified Network Defender, другим курсам тоже. И у нас в гостях представитель вендора Файзал Шабир, Country Manager, I think, He will better explain what is new in Certified Network Defender class, what new in labs, in course, uh, in other course from EC Council. So right now, I will make Faisal Shabir presenter, and uh, he will explain uh, something about Certified Network Defender. And you, seminar participants, have an opportunity to ask question directly to EC Council, to vendor. And uh, after his speech, I will come back, will comment, translate something. Right. Thank you very much, uh, Sergey. Добрый uh, вечер, or привет, or good evening. Uh, that is the only Russian words I know. But uh, I promise that uh, before the end of this year, I'm going to learn a little bit more of the Russian language, so it will be better for me to present it then accordingly. So um, again, good evening to each and every one of you, um, and thank you very much for um, the wonderful introduction from your end sergey just let me know if uh, all of you are able to see my screen yes i confirm now we can see your screen and your very, presentation welcome Faisal. very good thank you very much sergey once again and uh, just uh, as Sergey has introduced, my name is Faisal Shabir, and uh, I'm, actually, I'm the country manager for the Eastern European region. Uh, I look after a few countries in Eastern Europe, uh, but apart from that, I also look at uh, countries like Russia, uh, Ukraine, Turkey, and uh, Israel as well. Uh, so these are some of the territories I look after. And uh, today uh, we are going to be um, looking at uh, one of our best network security programs we have uh, today which is called cnd and in the market today this is known to be one of the best network security programs you could ever uh, witness and you could ever train as well so uh, these are the following topics we are going to be covering in the agenda today so i will be taking about 20 to 25 minutes of your time uh, from my end and then followed uh, after that uh, Sergey is then is going to be continuing and then he will further explain you about the other benefits of the program so uh, what I'm going to be covering today is going to be an introduction to EC Council so who we are followed by I'm going to be um, giving you an explanation about a case study now in a case study I'm going to be showing you 
uh, about one of the uh, biggest retail outlets uh, based out of United States called Target and how Target was a victim of a phishing attack because their network segmentation or their network security was not being managed in a right manner. Okay, and then followed by what is covered in our core track. Then I'm going to be explaining about why Certified Network Defender and what are the programs and features about the Certified Network Defender version 2.0, followed by who is actually looking for cybersecurity professionals and why do we need them in our current world today, followed by a question and answer sessions where I'll be more than happy to answer any of your questions you do have. So to begin with, um, as EC Council, uh, EC Council, we are the world's largest cybersecurity certification and training bodies in the world. We have been established uh, in the industry for more than 15 years and have more than 230 to 240,000 certified members all around the globe. Now, as EC Council, uh, we are just not a training company. I mean, that is what we are known for. But apart from uh, providing trainings and certifications, we also have our own cybersecurity solutions and cybersecurity services as well. Okay. And some of the um, members or some of the professionals, cybersecurity professionals who have been trained under Easy Council are those professionals today who are working for the FBI, who are working for Microsoft, who are working for some of the organizations like IBM and United Nations. And the reason why is because EC Council's certifications are all accredited by the Department of Defense in US, by the National Cybersecurity Center in the United Kingdom, uh, and also all our courses are mapped to the National Initiative for Cybersecurity Education. Now, generally, any sort of cybersecurity trainings or any sort of cybersecurity certifications, if they need to be having an international recognition, they need to be mapped to the NICE framework, N-I-C-E, NICE framework. And we are proud to say that most of our courses are mapped to the NICE framework, which means that EC Council courses are internationally recognized. So to begin with, I would like to give you um, a short preview about a case which had happened in US, as I explained earlier. Uh, so Target is a retail uh, giant, you know, retail, obviously, where you go and you purchase your, uh, you know, it could be your groceries, it could be your, your, your garments and, uh, you know, your homeware and a lot of other things like it's, it's one of the largest um, retail outlets. Now, this is a, is a little bit of an old a breach which had happened. Uh, this happened in the year 2013, in fact, which is about close to seven to eight years back. Now, I'll just give you an example of what happened in the breach. Okay. Now, if you look at the steps here, first and foremost, the breach happened due to a phishing attack. Okay. Now, Target as a retail industry works with a lot of third party providers you know you you we normally work with a lot of 30 third party providers who provide you mechanical facilities who provide you financial facilities and a lot of other facilities as well now target uh, was working with a third party provider called fezio mechanical um, um, hvac where what happened is these attackers they actually fished and they got into their network okay now what had happened is that they got into the so First and foremost, they fished into their network. They got the login credentials by connecting onto the target network and they implanted a malware. And the reason why they did that is because the network segmentation was not done carefully between the third party uh, systems and their point of sale systems. Now, I'm sure that you all know what a point of sale systems is, right? Whenever you go to a supermarket, or whenever you go to a a garment store, a point of sale system is where they do the billing, where they do the invoicing. They provide you the, uh, the, the, the bills and the invoices when you pay the cash or whatever. Okay. Now, generally what needs to happen is that uh, the point of sale network needs to be in, a, in, a, in another network and your uh, other third party maintenance related activity should be in another network. But unfortunately, what had happened is that both their networks were configured in the same network. Now, because of the, uh, the, the, the phishing attack which happened and because of the uh, access uh, they got uh, into the system, all their data was exfiltrated, which means that 
what happened is that it allowed them to collect all the credit card information of their customers okay and which actually created a very devastating effect right as you move on now what were the consequences to this attack okay 70 million records were stolen and these records were names addresses telephone numbers email addresses of all those consumers who were target shoppers who used to come to target and do their regular purchases okay what happened as point number two 46 percent of drop in their profits okay which means that their entire fourth quarter drop of their profits was dropped by 46 percent okay 200 million was the estimated uh, cost 200 million dollars was the estimated cost for all these credit unions because they had to reissue 21.8 million credit cards and the reason why is because of the stolen access and ultimately what happened the ceo of target had to resign because of this data breach and one of the main reasons it, it happened is because their brand reputation got affected right now why do i take this or why do i always explain about this particular case now the reasons or the points is what is given on your screen right now number one is there was no proper network segmentation done okay because if it was done then this would have been avoided because these hackers or these cyber criminals wouldn't have got into the point of sale system network okay so which means that the network segmentation was not done as simple as that right point number two cnd covers all the core topics related to cyber security for administrative privileges right because in an organization an it administrator you know what are the privileges related to networks and related to a lot of other areas is something which is covered in cnd right uh, point number three protecting all your networks for all kinds of attacks all kinds of breaches right is very very crucial for an organization because as i've mentioned that it just does not lead to data being stolen it just does not lead to data being breached but it is a reputational damage it creates a problem and a disruption in your business now imagine target being such a huge organization right when things like this happen with smaller organizations they will almost go bankrupt and they will close down and that is what has been happening because such kind of attacks if proper um, you know security systems are not implemented proper security infrastructure is not done obviously they go for a close down right so this is something which happened uh, in, in in this case as well where their brand reputation was spoiled right and again why i'm telling you this is because as cnd the program which we which i'm going to be explaining you a little bit shorter on is that uh, you know a proper network segmentation and malware protection could have avoided such a case right so you know i always explain that um, you know for always uh, for a problem there is always a solution now what i'm going to explain you is a solution right again we don't we don't sell solutions related to networks but at least we train those professionals who can take care of such networks right so uh, what is actually covered in our core track is these three certifications what you see in your screen today now today what i'm going to be explaining to you is about certified network defender which teaches you all elements and techniques about how to defend your network okay now when you move towards the offensive side that is where our most popular uh, certification which is the certified ethical hacker comes in place because obviously there you you learn the different techniques and tricks of ethical hacking and then we have the certified penetration tester certified penetration testing professional which ultimately aims at security assessment it aims at vulnerability assessment so that is the reason why we call this our core track or we call it our vulnerability assessment and penetration track so moving on our main topic for today is the certified network defender right why do you need to choose a certified network defender course i would explain this with the help of five important points point number one is it focuses mainly on operations rather than technology now generally what happens in courses like this is that you know you, you're, you're taught about uh, how the technology works what is the different elements in the technology but here it gives you a very deep understanding about the operations involved in network security 
right? It is just not the technology, but it is the operations involved in network security. And that is extremely important when you really, when you, when you have to get into the real world. <coughs> Point number two, the course is made up of 50% lab intensive, which means that, you know, the aim here is for you all to have a practical hands-on experience with the uh, with the uh, with the training what is given in network defense you know it is just not uh, learning or it is just not you know learning about how networks are, have to be defended but you also need to have practical hands on experience and that is what we focus towards right number 3 very detailed learning so just in a matter of 5 days our course can be finished in 5 days and in a matter of 5 days you get detailed learning about each and every element about network security right Again, the next point is it is among the top seven demanded jobs in the world, right? So whenever you, uh, you, you look at your Google or when you search for all the different kinds of jobs, uh, what is available in the information security industry, the network security is, comes always within the top seven demanded jobs in the world, okay? And when you're talking about network administrators, the network administrators actually come with multiple skills. You know, there, might, there would be just a network administrator who looks after administrative privileges. There will be those in network administrators who have a good switching and routing skills. There will be those network administrator who have storage skills, who have firewall installation skills. So depending on the area which you are interested in, uh, the salary bracket as well keeps increasing accordingly. And again, uh, being in the network security industry, which comes under the cybersecurity industry, still today is demanded as one of the highest salaries you can uh, earn towards. So going a little bit more deeper towards it, which I've already explained in my previous slide, but what I would like to highlight here is it maps to the NICE 2.0 framework, which is the latest framework. Now, NICE, N-I-C-E, means national initiative for cybersecurity education so which means that uh, any elements or any content relating to cybersecurity education which is being uh, provided and which has been designed by the nice uh, you know the, the the body our course the cnd course is exactly it matches to that so it exactly matches to what is really required for all those network security professionals so what is covered in the blue world or what is covered in the defensive world? Okay, now these are a few topics I would like to talk to you about, which is covered in the CND program, in the Certified Network Defender program. Uh, point number one, IoT, right? Again, Internet of Things. And this is what we've been hearing from uh, the last few years already, right? Anything which has an internet, be it uh, at your home, be it at uh, any organization, you obviously need to look at options of how you defend your IoT network, followed by virtualization, right? Today, we are living in a virtual world, you know, and especially because of, uh, let's say, in the last one year, we've been living in a pandemic world where most of these uh, employees have been accessing applications virtually over, uh, you know, over their virtual servers or wherever it is, right? So, obviously, the program teaches you how to defend your virtual network followed by some of the platforms like your mobile platforms like your cloud platforms we all know today more than 60 to 70 percent of the organizations are um, you know migrating from their traditional infrastructure to the cloud infrastructure okay and obviously the reasons you all know very well is you know its scalability is very easy uh, in terms of cost it can be well managed rather than buying heavy infrastructure uh, you know and stuff like that but you also need to learn on how to defend your cloud network right threat intelligence this is one point i would like to highlight to all of you that our program the network secure cnd program is the only network security program in the world today which teaches you about threat intelligence right because most of the other network security programs teaches you about different elements about network security but it does not give you a very detailed insight into what threat intelligence is all about and what uh, we as ec council believe is that you know uh, always a network security administrator or a network security manager within an organization should understand what is the next upcoming threats lying ahead and that is something which is being extensively taught uh, to you guys uh, in the cnd course okay followed by uh, you know some other elements in terms of uh, the different kinds of attack surfaces how to defend your attacks how to defend your data because that is extremely important right 
every organization, your data is extremely important. And I'm going to be explaining that to you in the next slide that, you know, what are the different kinds of layers which needs to be protected in order to protect your data. So the CND program covers a very uh, deep defense in-depth security strategy. Now, I would like to give you uh, an explanation here with reference to the different layers you see on the screen, right? So when you're talking about a defense in-depth layer, you're talking about seven different layers which uh, you need to uh, involve when you are involving a security strategy for your organization, right? So when you're looking at your layer number one, you're looking at all your policies. You're looking at your internet access policies. You're looking at your firewall policies, uh, the email security uh, for your organization, how your password policies are supposed to be, how your BYOD or bring your own device uh, policy should be within your organization. And again, all of this has to be compliant with the ISO 27001 standards or the PCI DSS standards. And again, this is something which is covered extensively in the CND program, followed by you're also looking at your physical security. When you're looking at your physical security, you're looking at your CCTV controls, you're looking at your access controls, you're looking at your power supply, your firefighting systems, you know? So this, uh, this is another angle when you're looking at your in-depth strategy. Then you're looking at your perimeter. Now, what is involved in your perimeter? Your servers, your DNS, your firewalls, your switches. These are something which has been covered in your perimeter. And then you're looking at how to defend your internal network. Now, in your internal network, again, you're talking about how to defend. So what is the configuration uh, rules uh, in your for your firewall, for your switches, for your servers? Again, this is something which is also covered in the CND program. Then you're looking at your host, which is your operating systems, the different kinds of antivirus solutions which you should be having in your organization and how to uh, you know configure them accordingly. Patch management systems, your password management systems. These are something which has been covered. Then you're talking about your application, how to defend your application. So how do you blacklist them? How to whitelist them? Uh, what is the application configuration uh, techniques to be adopted? You know, and, uh, and, and a lot of others, which I don't want to go in detail. And then ultimately, the aim of, your, uh, of you to defend your network is to defend your data. So how do you do that? What are the different data backup techniques? How do you recover your data? You know, what is the data retention techniques you're going to look at? What is, how do you, uh, how do you manage a proper data access control systems within your network? You know, how do you encrypt your data? What is the data DLP solutions or the data leakage prevention mechanism which you should adopt? Because ultimately in any organization, data is something which should be your ultimate goal to protect, right? And uh, what the, co the program covers is each and every area of defense, which ultimately leads to protecting your data. So what are the different approaches in your CND program? So the CND program uh, teaches you about four important approaches, which is preventive approach, reactive approach, proactive and retrospective, right? So when you're talking about a preventive approach, you're talking about, uh, you know, applying uh, controls, applying security controls. Uh, what are the different kinds of techniques and methods you can adopt in order to defend your network, right? For example, the, the one I explained in the previous slide, defense in-depth security, right? Followed by how your security architecture is supposed to be, how your appropriate configurations are going to be. So this is a preventive approach, which means that you are trying to set all the necessary policies and procedures in place so that any kind of an attack can be prevented or can be avoided. Then we move on to a reactive approach. Now, in a reactive approach, you know, you're looking at all those areas and concerns, the techniques, the processes, the tools are involved, which can actually help to detect any kind of a security breach, any kind of a security attempt. You know, like for example, how do you do traffic monitoring? What is the different kind of log management modules you're looking at? You know, how do you monitor your logs? You know, so these are more of a reactive approach. So when uh, an attack happens, or uh, when there is an attempt to a security breach, then what are the areas you need to look at so that it can be avoided? Then you're looking at a retrospective approach. Now, for example, uh, you know, an attack has happened, right? What is the corrective measures? How can you recover from such kind of an attack? What is your remediation techniques you're going to adopt? You know, when you're looking at your forensic investigation methods, you're looking at your incident response methods, you're looking at your disaster recovery methods, right? Ultimately, this all leads to, your, you know, how can you properly set 
a business continuity uh, model in place right so that is a retrospective approach and then finally we're talking about a proactive approach now in a proactive approach uh, it also always involves and applies all the different kinds of security controls methods and techniques you need to adopt so that you are aware of the next upcoming attacks right what is your risk management techniques you're going to adopt threat intelligence which i had explained uh, you know in my uh, in some of my previous slides right threat intelligence is extremely extremely important so you know you have to look at your different kinds of attack surfaces uh, in plan so again we are looking at a proactive approach so so now what you understand from this um, you know uh, four different approaches is that you're looking at an end to end security approach towards defending your network to give you a little bit more uh, explanation uh, towards it you know uh, i would like to give you a real life example right now uh, you know we, you we all live in you know homes some of them some of us live us in uh, in apartments which is flat some of us live us live in our own homes right now we always ensure that uh, you know we have our uh, lock systems uh, properly managed you know we ensure that our windows are properly locked we ensure that our uh, let's say the back door or let's say our uh, you know our our uh, top floor if you know some of you might be living in a, in another floor you know we have to always ensure that each and every floor each and every area is protected so that a thief so that a criminal does not get inside your house and steal your valuables right so i i would just like to give you an example related to that point number 1 prediction you know you have to first predict where it where the thief is going to enter from and which is easier for him you know whether the thief is going to come from a window whether he is going to be entering from your front door or whether he might be coming from your back door so you have to look at all the risk management techniques involved uh, in it right so because it's a risk you have to you have to look at ways of how you can manage that so that is a prediction approach right then you got to look at all the protection mentality which means that what you will do you will uh, look at uh, you know maybe um, fixing a very strong lock uh, for your back door you will look at uh, fixing a very uh, nice uh, and a strong lock system for your windows for example similarly you know when we are talking about in the it mode you are looking at how to protect all the different platforms your mobile platforms your iot platforms your virtual platforms your cloud platforms so these are the different platforms which you need to learn how to protect them right then we are looking at detection so which means that if an attempt has happened you know where it has happened from did the thief enter from the back door did the criminal actually enter from the back door so you know uh, so that's more on the detection techniques you know you should look at your network traffic logs you know where the network is uh, is been affected and you know where the attempt has actually happened right and then finally how do you respond to an attack so if the criminal has entered your house and he has stolen your valuables so that it does not happen next time what is your incident response techniques you're going to take care of right how you're going to ensure that such kind of an attack will not happen in the near future so the only program in the world today which teaches you all these four approaches which is predict protect detect and respond so as we move on why network administrators in any organization are known to be the first line of defense the reason why is because they spend a lot of time within your network environments right so be it uh, you know your routers your switches your firewalls you know so most of the time uh, most of their daily jobs is involved in looking at the different kinds of network traffic uh, you know the different kinds of logs which uh, comes into your network so that is the reason why they are always known to be your first line of defense in any organization right and if they can use the four approach of what the cnd teaches you which is predict protect detect and response at an early stages any kind of an impact any kind of an uh, attack can be avoided some of the uh, core areas or uh, or uh, you know topics which are covered or modules which are covered in the cnd uh, version 2 uh, it consists of 20 different modules right you're talking about uh, how to defend your linux systems your windows systems how to defend your network perimeter um you know what are the different how to how to uh, look at your network logs how do you monitor them how do you analyze them what is the different kinds of risk management techniques the business continuity and disaster recovery techniques so if you look at it there are 20 different modules which is covered which is very very important under the cnd program 
Now, here I would like to give you an example of a difference between the network security, which is covered in CND, in comparison to the other uh, programs which is there in the market. Now, sometimes, you know, uh, I always get this question from, uh, you know, some, some candidates saying that, uh, you know, what is the difference between doing a CCNA from, from Cisco, which also talks about network security, or let's say MCSE uh, from Microsoft in comparison to the CND program, right? Now, to give you an example here, CCNA and MCSE, they focus mainly on vendor specific configurations. So when you're talking about CNA, CCNA, it teaches you the network uh, security configurations specifically related to Cisco devices only, right? When you're talking about MCSE, you're talking about system administration techniques for Microsoft Windows systems only, right? But when you're talking about CND, it is a very vendor, vendor neutral certification. Okay, so it is not a very vendor specific uh, certification because it teaches you in depth about network security, which means what is the different strategies to, to be adopted? What is the operational network security capabilities uh, which takes place, right? How the design mechanism is, what is the different security concepts to be adopted? What are the different procedures and tools to be adopted? How do you design and develop a proper, uh, you know, secure network for your organization and how to detect such kind of threats? So that is what is extensively covered in the Certified Network Defender program. Um, uh, to give you uh, a differentiation, you know, a course which is very, very similar to our CND program is the uh, Security Plus course from Comtia. Now, uh, when you look at the screen out here, this actually gives you the exact difference between what is covered in terms of modules in our CND program in comparison to the Security Plus program in uh, the Comtia, right? And the screen is very much visible in front of you that majority of the modules are covered in the CND program, which is uh, a prime, either limited or it is not covered in the Security Plus program. When it comes to uh, the exam, now uh, in total, the exam is for four hours, uh, the CND exam, and it covers 100 questions and all these questions are multiple choice questions okay and the passing percentage is somewhere in the range of 60 to 85 percent because the passing percentage is calculated using some sort of an algorithm which determines you know the way how you have actually answered uh, each and every question which uh, you know which which you, which you have been given so uh, the range of passing percentage is somewhere between 60 to 85 percent depending on how you have answered each and every question and who is the, uh, the the certified network defender program for it is for all those network administrators uh, for all of those professionals who want to become network engineers cyber security engineers uh, who want to pursue becoming a security analyst, who want to uh, look after network defense, you know, so for all those professionals who want to move into uh, such professions, CND is one of the best programs for them. So, um, you know, let's look at now the network security market. Now, as I've explained in one of my previous slides, the network security market is expected to grow at 273.58 billion by the year 2027. In the year 2019, they were already at 168 billion, right? So if you see, it is a growing industry, right? And that gap needs to be filled. Coming to the cybersecurity workforce, right? This is uh, this is a very uh, important slide which I always explain in my in my uh, in my webinars. Uh, is that you know we still see uh, a huge gap to be filled, right? And today, this gap is about 3.12 million of cybersecurity professionals, cybersecurity, um, uh, you know, people required all around the world, right? So that is the gap which needs to be filled. And again, you know, recently we have been seeing a lot of attacks happening, right? We've heard about the Kaseya attack. We've heard about the SolarWinds attack. We've heard about the Colonial Pipeline attack, the Florida attack, you know, so there are multiple attacks which each and every day nowadays we've been hearing uh, as such. And obviously, we need to see more number of cybersecurity professionals, uh, you know, joining the cybersecurity industry and filling the 3.12 million gap, which we see uh, around the world. And then finally, why do you need to choose a career in cybersecurity? Point number one, zero percent unemployment which is literally there is no unemployment in the cybersecurity industry right so why because there are 
there are a large variety of roles for a cybersecurity professional, be it uh, an ethical hacker, be it in network security, you know, in network defense, uh, be it in forensic investigation, in incident handling, um, SOC analyst or security analyst. So there are multiple roles for cybersecurity professionals. And again, today it is one of the fastest growing industries we see, right? Your role as a cybersecurity professional is extremely important because your role is connected to the financial impact of an organization. Now, imagine when an organization is a victim of a ransomware attack where you lose millions and millions of dollars, right? Your role here is to defend. Your role here is to protect that financial impact of that organization, right? So that is why your role as a cybersecurity professional is extremely important, right? And finally, last but not the least it is a high salaried industry right we all know that cybersecurity as an industry you know as a profession is one of the highest salaries you uh, you can get anywhere in the world right that's it from my side uh, guys i hope uh, you had um, enjoyed that presentation i hope it was clear for uh, all of you right those are my details uh, that's my email address and that's my linkedin profile feel free to connect uh, to my linkedin and feel free to send an email to me as well if you do have any doubts anytime in the near future i'll be more than happy to accept it so that uh, that completes my webinar for today i would now like to hand this over to sergey sergey over to you faisal thank you very much for your brilliant speech and my pleasure. Uh, now I would uh, like to ask our participants, maybe they have some questions. <laughs> Welcome guys, uh, you have unique opportunity to ask uh, anything you like directly to EC Council country manager. Mm -hmm. Could I ask a question? Sure, go ahead. Yes, uh, Faisal, uh, uh, Thank you for your presentation. It was very interesting, really. Uh, and uh, you talked about uh, relationship uh, between uh, Security Plus and SND2. And what about uh, relationship uh, course uh, between uh, SND version 2 and EAEC2? Thank you. Uh, you mean uh, the difference between version 1 and version 2? Uh, a relationship between uh, SND version 2 and uh, EISC2. Okay, I will have to take that question down uh, and uh, get back to you with uh, an answer because uh, personally, uh, I don't have an answer to that, but I can check that with our network security team and revert back to you. But could you could you report that to me again? It is uh, uh, SCSE, is it? Yes. Okay, no problem. Uh, what I'll do is I will get you an answer for that and I will get back to maybe Sergey um, so that he can then revert back to you. Okay? Yes, thank you very much. Welcome. I can tell uh, from my opinion, uh, sure. as, as I know, there is a lot of security conferences. And uh, when we have security conferences, Hacker halted, take down uh, Easy Council, and I see two have very close relationship. So if you pass certification exam for from ISC, um, I think you mean uh, CISSP first of all. Uh, it is good for EC Council. And if you pass exam from EC Council, you have point from ISC too. Is from my experience and what I know about their relationship. Yeah, because uh, again, when you're talking about ISC squared, obviously ISC squared, they have their own set of uh, programs. Now, as you rightly explained about CISSP, now CISSP uh, is more of a managerial uh, level program, you know, and uh, something similar to CISSP is our CISO program. See, uh, the Chief Information Security Officer certified chief information security officer program because that is something which closely relates to the cissp program but when you're talking about cnd it is more like a beginner level program you know for all those professionals who want to get into the cyber security industry who want to learn about the network security uh, program as such it is more like an entry level for them it is like you know 
it is it is for all those people who want to get into the cybersecurity industry. That's what uh, I would say uh, as such. But again, we we both offer cybersecurity services. It is just that you know we have our own international recognition, and IC squared they have their own international recognition. No, I think it is good start uh, from certified network defender, and yeah. then we have freedom to move to EC Council certification, or maybe from other body. Why not? Absolutely, absolutely. Well, okay, maybe. Uh, Thank you very much, colleague. Yeah. More question. Most welcome. Any more questions? We will read chat. We have uh, some more time. If you have questions, you can type them and we will read and answer. Let, mm, let me now to comment what Faisal told, explain how we in our computer training center follow certified network defender security strategy. strategy. So I will add uh, some words, okay? Уважаемые коллеги, что я еще хочу дополнить и пояснить и прокомментировать, что Файзал сказал. Конечно, хороший же вендор Совет по электронной коммерции. И также мы в учебном центре предлагаем курс Certified Network Defender, защита от хакерских атак, но и другие курсы также. Что я хотел бы подчеркнуть как инструктор со стороны учебного центра? Прежде всего, аккредитация. Аккредитация курса интересна тем, что, во-первых, многие организации госструктуры одобряют на международном уровне и сертификацию CND и курс. Но это есть аналог и у нас в России, и это очень хорошо для вашего работодателя. То есть если кто-то отправляет на курсы повышения квалификации, какая-то компания, компания, конечно, заинтересована, чтобы человек не просто так учился, а учился максимально близко к тому, что он будет делать по работе. У нас в России есть вот такой вот стандарт. Можно его найти, Министерство труда, приказ об утверждении профессионального стандарта. Мол, давайте скажем, что должен уметь специалист по информационной безопасности. Он, он выполняет трудовые функции, и специалисты такие, специалисты такие, какие-то требования у них. А сам стандарт, если вы найдете, ну, там же недалеко лежит Министерство труда, профессиональный стандарт, специалист информационной безопасности. Должен знать, уметь это, 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 и это, это, это он умел, должен уметь делать. Вот точно такая же штука есть на международном уровне. Называется Nice Framework. И что придумали EC Council? Совет по электронной коммерции утверждает, что он этому профессиональному стандарту в своих курсах соответствует. То есть, оказывается, есть инициатива, которая говорит, давайте определим, что должен знать, уметь специалист по безопасности. А здесь, вот если долистать, тут написано, что есть у нас различные курсы для пользователей, для защитников, и у них есть тоже цели. Так вот, оказывается, цели экзаменов, курсов соответствуют требованиям НАИС. И это очень хорошо. Как нам хорошо учиться, то есть мы спокойны за то, что если мы по программе секансы учимся, мы потом можем идти работать в госучреждении, нас учат тому, что реально нужно в соответствии с простандартом. СИСО для руководителей, что они должны знать, уметь, CEH, точно так же здесь CND найду, и здесь будет написано, что вот смотрите, сертификация CND, вот это вы должны знать, уметь, а мы как раз этому научим, и это будет в какой-то главе, в каком-то модуле написано. Конечно, это доля условности, неужели можно каким-то одним другим вопросом определить, насколько умеет кандидат управлять каким-то там процессом по конфигурированию управлению. Но сам факт, что мы учимся по программе, которая аккредитована и соответствует, то тогда это совсем хорошо так учиться.
Ну, вы в чат пишете, не аналог ли это какой-то другой сертификации ССПА, например. Нет, здесь, если от ЦИСКа какая-то сертификация, она продвигает идею, что ЦИСКа всех спасет с точки зрения безопасности. А курсы от VC Council, они независимы от вендора, ничего не продвигают, не рекламируют никакой продукт. Изучаем, что там с безопасностью в Windows, и в Linux, и в Cisco даже. В новой версии курса больше практических работ, больше инструментов. И вообще EC Council обновляет трек курсов. CND обновился, всех курс обновился, всех два обновился, всех три расследования компьютерных инцидентов и то обновился. Конечно, хорошо, когда идет такое развитие, на волну попадать всегда хорошо. И что еще? В CND, как Пайзал говорил, 20 модулей. Но 20 модулей – это очень много. Поэтому предподготовка, она становится более важной. Мы раньше приглашали на курс, говорили, приходите, по ходу разберемся, даже если нет предподготовки. А сейчас я вам поясню. У нас есть курсы по безопасности, а есть курс CND. CND к экзамену готовят, что вы закончите курс, пойдете работать на предприятие уровня Министерства обороны. И поэтому, если есть какая-то тема, на курсе Certified Network Defender мы уделяем 45 минут пару этой теме. Не то, чтобы научиться, а чтобы структурировать знания и какие-то тонкости подчеркнуть. А на этих курсах, на эту тему выделен целый день. Например, система обнаружения вторжений. Конечно, если вы систему обнаружения вторжений целый день поизучали, потом пришли на курс, 45 минут хватит, что там. Если вы фаерволы... Полдня конфигурировали, 45 минут, более-менее понятно. Поэтому предподготовка актуальна, но опыт показывает, если предподготовка есть, курс кажется легким. А если предподготовки нет, можно учиться, но сложным курс кажется. Ну а центральный курс Certified ASICO Hacker – это тоже Номер один курс. А так весь целый трек от основы безопасности до управления службой учебный центр предлагает. У нас лабораторный стенд. Есть у EC Council iLabs. Очень хороший стенд. Но мы также и наш собственный стенд используем. Я вам его покажу. Я на компьютере, где этот же курс проводится. И здесь у нас VirtualBox. Он уже установлен. Вот тут сколько виртуальных машин у нас. И в этом лабораторном стенде вот у нас и Firewall, и система обнаружения вторжений, и Linux, и Windows. В общем, много всего есть, что поизучать. И они вот так вот красиво, машины связанные. Мы конфигурируем различные правила. И используем Security Onion. Наверное, хорошо и до курса на него посмотреть. Security Onion – это тот же самый Linux, только вот эти вот программки все уже предустановлены. Вот мы его стартуем, с одной стороны, да, это вот Linux и в конфиг написали, с другой стороны, давай вот это вот все установим, сетап уже на рабочем столе, ярлык, мы запускаем, Security Onion говорит, поехали конфигурировать. Elasticsearch, Logstash, Kibana, Sguil, Squirt, Zik, Snort с Suricatai. И чтобы не тратить время на установку, мы говорим, конечно, давай поехали, что-то там сконфигурируем, что может быть потом. И вот давай next, 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 установ, установили, ну, допустим, вот в таком вот. И визард открывается, нам вот это вот все устанавливается, и мы тратим время на то, как использовать различные инструменты, а не то, как его устанавливать. Также используем... На курсе Parrot Linux. Есть Kali Linux, а мы теперь Parrot Linux используем. Тот же самый Debian, но если посмотреть, тут вот точно так же программки запускаются. Есть терминал, где можно команды писать. А если хотим сайты взламывать, у нас есть Luxury 30 сайт. На курсе по хакингу мы его взламываем. На курсе по защите защищаем. Новый дизайн учебника. Глаза бросаются сразу, кому-то покажется, может быть, более красочным. Не только содержание изменилось, но и дизайн изменился тоже. А новое в лабораторных работах, конечно, если их больше, то есть 
руководству к выполнению лабораторных работ. Мы практикуемся, чтобы не только знания получить, но и уметь что-то реально делать. Лабораторные работы у нас в центре мы творческими задачами разбавляем. Если есть какая-то технология, я студентам предлагаю какую-нибудь загадку. Она не то что сложная, она скорее смешная, но вот процесс решения требует не того, чтобы вы выучили что-то, прочитали, запомнили, а чтобы вы подумали. Мои творческие задачи, они сопровождают лабораторные работы, которые, как Файзал говорил, расположены на том, что мы хотим защитную меру применить так, чтобы что-то предсказать, защитить, обнаружить, среагировать. Давайте я вам бегло покажу инструменты, которые в этих аспектах безопасности играют. Предсказать. Знали, что есть инструмент Attack Surface Analyzer AMAS? Вот на курсе обязательно посмотрим, такой график построим, увидим, да, Поверхность атаки будем анализировать, может быть, предскажем еще до нападки хакера, что мы можем быть атакованы. Также OSIM. Может быть, вы знакомы с таким вот решением? Если посмотреть, вот он, OSIM. Сейчас запущу, виртуальная машинка будет запускаться. Так она оказывается не только сиемка, она оказывается еще и обнаружение... Определение, киберугроз, там функционал такой тоже есть. Защищать хосты. Ну, конечно, это тема курса отдельного. Как устроен Linux, как устроен Windows. Но, тем не менее, мы как устроены системы на курсе подчеркиваем. И на чем держится защита, например, технология LAPS, изучаем что-то из защитных мер внедряем. Но снова подчеркну, что если вы хотите вот только безопасность Windows изучать, приходите 5 дней, безопасность только Windows изучаем. Linux то же самое. Но здесь мы все собираем воедино, как квинтэссенция, что нужно по управлению хостов. А мобильные устройства тоже хосты. Если вы ни разу в жизни вот на этом сайте Миродора не были, ни один компьютер сюда не завели и не видите, как вы можете управлять мобильными устройствами, это CND хороший старт для этого. У нас вот виртуальная машина, Android. Свой Android жалко, а вот эти андроиды, они виртуальные, их не жалко. Их можно и завирусовать, и любой агент можно поставить для тренировки. Так вот мы на эти андроиды агентика поставим, а потом видим, как этим андроидом мы управляем. Ну да, у меня тут вот где-то один андроид, но там где один, там значит и 100 может быть. И уделено внимание интернету вещей. Ребята, интернет вещей меня последнее время все больше увлекает. Потому что его изучаю, и не потому что это вещи, а потому что во многом технологии схожи с тем, что есть в Windows, в Linux. Мы, если будем копаться в защите интернета вещей, то и в реверс инжиниринг уйдем, и в бинарную эксплуатацию. И там большое многообразие операционных систем, протоколов. Вот мне то, что надо. Я вроде бы что-то соображаю в компьютерах, все изучил, Windows, Linux, технологии, TCP, IP, все знаю. А тут, пожалуйста, вот тебе еще на канальном уровне протоколы, на транспортном, на прикладном, есть что поизучать. Ну и, конечно, если оно так красиво работает, есть что поизучать, то как насчет безопасности? На чем держится безопасность интернет-вещей, на курсе изучаем. И если ни разу в жизни не эмулировали интернет-вещей, то, конечно, хорошо запустить и вот симулятор, сказать, вот у нас датчики, вот у нас утюжки лампочки, а здесь у нас центр управления, посмотреть, как идет коммуникация и где может быть опасность и как защититься. То же самое с облачными технологиями. Конечно, как устроено облако, тема отдельных курсов сертификации. Но мы на курсе Certified Network Defender основные моменты безопасности облачных вычислений, контейнеризации, виртуализации подчеркиваем, практическую работу делаем. Конечно, хорошо хоть раз в жизни зайти 
АВС зарегистрироваться, посмотреть, чем EC от ЕС отличается, EC2, а что-то еще тут есть и как тут управляться с точки зрения безопасности. Группа безопасности у нас создана, зачем она? Хотя бы на таком уровне любой безопасник облака должен знать. Неважно они какие, если будет другой провайдер, там будет что-то подобное. А если обнаружить, то, конечно, хорошо узнавать такие скриншоты, чтобы вы владели инструментами, которые позволяют проводить мониторинг инфраструктуры, что-то определять. Нет, нет, и Сиканцу ничего не рекламирует, не говорит вот этот вот инструмент купите, купите, он хороший. В рамках лабораторных работ мы несколько инструментов посмотрим, один, другой, третий. Если этот ПРТГ монитор вам понравится, хорошо. Если что-то другое, по крайней мере, мы будем иметь представление о инструментах, которые позволяют обнаруживать хакерские атаки. Ну а если реагировать, должен быть процесс и хоть чуть-чуть попробовать в системе реагирования на инциденты поработать, это, конечно, хорошо, тоже тема курса и лабораторной работы Certified Network Defender. Новые техники защиты, которые в курсе появились, по ним пробежались, то, что Пайзал рассказывал концептуально, глобально, и то, как я вижу это как инструктор. А прежний трек экзаменов с точки зрения CND не сильно изменился, он скорее здесь вот изменился, у нас был курс всех 2 икса, а сейчас он превратился в C-Pend, но CND как был, так и остался. А вот трек, начинаем с CND, профессионально, но все-таки первый путь, потом идем в хакеры, потом в пентестеры и потом мастер по тестированию на проникновение. Это высшая техническая квалификация, которую совет по электронной коммерции распознает, и мы можем сдавать такой экзамен, доказывать, что мы совсем хорошо разбираемся в защитных технологиях. Вот что я хотел сказать, прокомментировать речь Файзала. Если у нас еще есть какие-то вопросы, то хорошее время их задать. Вот Алексей пишет, спикер вначале поздоровался на русском языке. Но я думаю, это не вопрос, это скорее замечание. Да, мы не первый раз встречаемся и делаем успехи и в информационных технологиях, и в коммуникациях. Екатерина спрашивает, можно ли онлайн изучать. Смотрите, есть варианты такие. Вы можете учиться, приходя в класс. И такие проводятся курсы до сих пор. Да, мы собираемся, инструктор что-то показывает, рассказывает. Но если вы хотите заниматься онлайн, то выбирайте формат открытого обучения. Чем он лучше? Когда онлайн обучение, вы как бы подглядываете за тем, что говорит инструктор. И не можете его перебивать, останавливать. А формат открытого обучения – это когда вам предоставляется видеозапись, которую вы можете перематывать вперед-назад, на паузу ставить. Кто-то позвонил, не страшно, за паузе. И в то же время инструктор всегда с вами на связи. Если какой-то вопрос, тут же трансляцию на паузу, задавайте вопрос инструктора. Поэтому, если вы думаете, не поучиться ли мне онлайн, то обратите внимание на формат открытого обучения с использованием видеозаписи. У нас видеозапись такая, что курс читается, видеозапись живого курса делается. В следующий месяц тот же самый курс, я то же самое рассказываю, ну, конечно, хорошо с записи. И есть курсы, которые лучше в формате открытого обучения проходить. Почему? Потому что где-то зачем-то не уследили. О, Сергей Павлович, повтори еще раз, неудобно, да? А тут паузу. Перемотали вперед-назад, хорошо. Ну, курс по хакингу, например, вот он такой, что каждый месяц очная группа набирается, студенты приходят, говорят, мы хотим вот видеть, вот прям вот лично хотим смотреть, но это уже от человека зависит. Еще вопросы? А, ну, здесь скорее ответ. Вы пишете, что компте дополняет CND. Да, действительно, мне приходилось читать и Комптио учебники, и других вендоров, и CND, это тоже, конечно, хорошо. Разные вендоры по-разному на безопасность смотрят. Я вообще вот был поражен, 
когда я изучал безопасность с точки зрения Microsoft, а потом как на безопасность Linux смотрит. И вроде бы тоже безопасность, но технологии совершенно разные. А когда думаю, дай-ка CCNP Security прочитаю Cisco, там совсем другой подход. И когда увидел CND, что взяли отовсюду, не привязываясь ни к решениям, ни к вендорам, и посмотрели на безопасность, ну это, конечно, третий взгляд, который аккумулирует эти три взгляда в один. Еще вопросы? Всех вопросов на семинаре не задать. Но вы знаете, где находить и меня, и учебный центр. Если после семинара будут какие-то вопросы, мы остаемся на связи, будем в контакте. Всегда к нам обращайтесь, всегда будем рады вас слышать, вам помочь. Будем на связи, будем в контакте. Всем успехов на пути специалиста информационной безопасности.